Are you sick and tired of playing the same old one finger power chord riffs and drop tunings? Well, what if I told you with just a couple of simple tweaks you could make your riffs more better? Like this. I'm Uncle Ben, and this here's Turkey, and today we're going to have some fun with drop tunings. Oh, he's tired. Back in the day when I was just a young uncle, I remember learning about drop D tuning and all the one finger power chord possibilities that it offered. But after I learned every silver chair song that I could and tried writing some riffs of my own, I started to get kind of bored with the tuning because all I knew how to do was one finger power chords. But these days I look at that one finger bar and I kind of see it as a blank canvas that we can expand upon and turn into major chords, minor chords, suspended chords, all kinds of cool stuff. That's what you're going to learn about today. As always, downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more are available to everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. This week, everybody who supports my channel, even at just a $1 a month level, gets access to a very special bonus lesson to go along with this one, showing you guys how you can make jazzy major 7, minor 7, and dominant 7 chords while in drop tunings. So don't delay, click the link in the video description and sign up today. Thanks. Gear-wise for today's video, I'm using my lovely Sir Modern T here loaded with the Woodshed pickups and I'm going into the Kemper Profiler. So for today's video, I've got my guitar here in drop D tuning, so that way the low E string is tuned down one whole step to the note D. But you could use all these concepts and shapes and stuff in any other drop tuning that's more lowlier, like drop C or drop A or whatever. Even if you have like a seven string guitar and you're doing a drop tuning on there, you could still use all these ideas on the bottom three strings. First things first, let me talk nerdy to you here a little bit and let's talk about some theory and stuff. Because whenever we play that one finger power chord shape on the bottom three strings of our guitar in a drop tuning, it produces a power chord, the sound of rock music that the kids love, right? Now a power chord is a combination of two very specific intervals. It's a combination of the root and the fifth, okay? And whenever we play that one finger across those three strings, it gives us root, fifth, and then root again on the next string. Root, fifth, root. Now, a power chord isn't major or minor. It's kind of a, a neutral sound, if you want to think of it that way. Whenever you play a power chord, it doesn't sound inherently happy or sad, like a big old, you know, major or minor chord does. The cool thing about that is that means that you can use a power chord in place of any major or minor chord. So if I was to walk those chord shapes up the scale like this, you can hear it's kind of a one size fits all sort of sound, but it also just kind of lacks a little bit of interest, right? All those chords sound the same. We hear those from players in drop tunings all the time. We need to expand and learn more if we want to sound more better. Those are the first couple of shapes that you gotta know if you wanna mix it up in your drop tunings. It's the shapes that we use for major chords and minor chords. Now we're here in the guitar friendly key of G and I'm playing this G major chord like this. You can see I've still got the bottom two strings barred here on the fifth fret. And then I'm stretching that little finger out two whole steps above the bar. So one step, two step. And that's giving me that major sound. Now the reason that works is because as I said, the one finger shape yields root, fifth, and root, right? Well, if that's the root note, according to the major scale, that's the second. And according to the major scale, that would be the third, right? Because the major scale always goes first, second, third, or root note, whole step, whole step. If you don't know the major scale that well, I recommend you guys pause this and check out my This Is Why You Suck at Guitar, You Don't Know the Major Scale video. 
I guarantee it'll open up a lot of stuff about this for you and help you learn theory better. So start there if you don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to those intervals. So anyway, root fifth, root second, third, that's why this is major. That gives us the combination of notes that is root fifth, third. And considering a major chord is any combination of root third, fifth, it could go five, three, one, one, three, five, whatever. It doesn't really matter what order the notes are in. The end result is the same. So that's a shape that you can use for a major chord anywhere on the neck. The second shape that he used there was an A minor chord, and it looks like this. Now you can see the familiar bar here on the bottom two strings, and then use your uh, little finger here and move up one and a half steps above the bar on the D string. So my shape is like seven, seven, ten. And again, that is a minor chord anywhere we put it. B minor, A minor, E minor, anywhere you put that shape is gonna yield a minor chord. Now the reason that it's minor, again, it's good to know the theory behind this stuff, is to go back to kind of like what I said about that major chord example, right? How it was root fifth, root, and then we counted up from this root note and went root second, third. Well, a minor chord doesn't have a third. It has a flattened third. So that means it's lowered by a half step, right? So if this is root and that's second and that's third, I can make it a flat third or minor third by simply moving down one fret. That gives us the sum total of root fifth flat third, unlike our major, which was root fifth third. But in traditional Western music harmony, there's certain places within the key or scale that those major chords and those minor chords are gonna sound more better. Now let's talk about that. Let's put ourselves in the key of G again right here, right? Now if I go off of the low E string here and I play up the G scale, again that pattern for the major scale is root note, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Look at these notes. G, the second note is A, the third note's B, fourth note is C, fifth note is D, the sixth is E, the seven is F sharp, and then we're back at the one again, which is G. The big stretchy major chord shape that we learned tends to sound the best when it's placed on the first, the fourth, one, two, three, four, and the five. One, four, and five. The minor chord shapes tend to sound the best on the second, so one, two, the third, and the sixth notes of the scale. Three, four, five, six. Two, three, six. That's where the minor chords are usually gonna sound the best. So, so far we'll have a major chord here starting off on the one. We move up a whole step, go to the two, which is a minor chord. Step up to the three, which is minor. Half step up to four, major. Whole step up to five, major. Whole step up to six, which is minor. And then we move up a whole step to seven, which is neither major nor minor. It's that dang old demolished chord. I mean, diminished chord. That's a spicy meta ball right there. Now, I'm up here in the uh, you know, 16th position. I'm actually gonna drop this down a whole octave just to make it easier to see and play, especially if you're learning this on like acoustic or something like that. So let's move down here to the fourth fret. Again, if that's the one, then that's the seven here right behind it. So this is the same thing as this. Anyway, we're just moving it down so you can see it better. Now again, we gotta look at that basic formula of a power chord, root fifth root and understand what's in a diminished chord, right? Remember how we said that a major chord is one, three, five, and that a minor chord is one flat three, five? A diminished chord takes that even further. It's got one and flat three, like your minor chord does, but it's also got the flat five, the tritone or devil's interval, which is what makes it sound so darn diabolical. Okay, so look at it this way. Root, fifth, root. That's our cheese pizza, right? That's our starting point. Root fifth, well we don't need fifth. We need flat fifth if it's diminished. So we're gonna knock that down a half step. So now we're gonna have to play it this way, right? Because again, we don't want root fifth, we want root flat fifth. And then according to what we learned about the minor chords, if that's root, that's root, that's second, that's flat third, right? Wow, 
That's a spooky sounding chord. And also quite stretchy. You can see I've got my middle finger here on the four, my first finger on the three, then my little finger here stretched out all the way to seven. That's definitely pretty uncomfortable. It's like the back seat of a Volkswagen Beetle, if you know what I mean. Thankfully, we don't use diminished chords all that much anymore. They used to use them a lot back in the classical days. There's tons in jazz tunes and stuff like that, but in traditional, you know, pop punk harmony or something like that, you're not likely to be using that chord anyway. Let's put ourselves on another key and walk through all seven chords. Let's go for the key of E, starting here at fret number two. So we're gonna start right there with the major chord. Whole step up, minor. Whole step up to the third, minor. Half step to the fourth, major. Whole step to the fifth, major. Whole step to the sixth, minor. Whole step up to the seven, diminished. Half step up, we're back to the one, major. So the next time you have a riff that maybe looks something like this. Consider spicing that up by turning them into their major or minor variants. So we'd have major here. We'd have minor here, one, two, three. Half step up major. Full step up major. Now that's the order that stuff goes in whenever you're in major keys, but if you're a dark metal overlord, you're gonna be writing in minor keys a lot, right? So let's talk about those in the order that the chords go in there. Again, I've got a great video all about the minor scale that you should check out. It's called, This Is Why You Suck At Guitar, You Don't Know The Minor Scale. It's a great compliment to that major scale one I mentioned earlier. Definitely check that one out if you wanna learn everything about the minor scale. It's kinda of like learning a, a second language compared to the major scale. Uh, the minor scale is a little bit different. Let's go for E minor right here, very familiar guitar key. The root notes of the minor scale go root note, step up to the two, half step up to its third note, step up to four, step up to five, half step to six, step to seven, step to root again. So root, step, half, step, step, half, step, step. And the chords are gonna lay in like this. The one is minor. Two is diminished. Your three is major. Your four is minor. Your five is minor. Your six is major. Your seven is major. And then you're back at the one again, the minor. Minor, diminished, major, minor, minor. Major, major, minor. But if you think about your major chords as being kind of your vanilla tonality and your minors as being your deep, rich chocolate, that means if we want the full Neapolitan spread, we need an alternative. We need a strawberry in here, right? Something that's neither major or minor. And this is why you should learn this simple sus2 shape. It's a really cool sound. These are all over modern, you know, metal and prog and stuff like that. I believe I first learned these chords by learning Everlong by the Foo Fighters. I always think of these as like, oh, it's the Everlong chord shape, you know? And again, this is a sus2 chord. And these are really cool because they're not major or minor, kind of like your power chord, but they're just more interesting sounding than your power chords too. Now we said a second ago that a major chord is one, three, five intervallically, and that a minor chord is one flat three, five, and that a diminished is one flat three, flat five, right? A sus two chord goes like this. It goes one, two, five, okay? So let's think about that one finger power chord here on G. Again, that's our cheese pizza, right? One, five, one, intervallically speaking. If that's one, then that's two, right? Again, remember how we did one, two, three? Let's just add in one, two. 
that gives us that sus2 sound. One, five, two is what we have under our fingers now. Now again, that's not major, it's not minor, and it can be used in place of a major or minor chord most of the time. So that means you could take any old boring progression that you're coming up with and replace it instead with these sus2 chords. It's probably gonna sound really cool. You could hear whenever I added in the suspended second voicings on top of that basic power chord riff, it didn't really mess with the harmony or sound like strange or get in the way or anything like that. It just kind of sounded more interesting. And again, you can replace almost any of your chords with a sus2 instead. There's a couple of exceptions. We'll talk about those as we go here. Let's put ourselves in the key of G again, right? One, two, three, half step to four, five, six, seven, half step to one. We can put that sus2 shape on the one. We can put it on the two to replace that minor chord. If you put it on the three though, you get a note that's not in key. This note right here, if you put that sus2 on the three chord, you'll get a C sharp in there that doesn't fit in the key. That's not necessarily saying you're not allowed to do it, you know? I think, um, I think it was actually Greg Howe said in an interview one time that Music theory is more like music tendencies, things that tend to work well. Doesn't mean that you can't break the rules and have some fun and make something that sounds interesting. So I'm not saying you can't use it on the three, I'm just saying it doesn't technically fit in key. But again, who cares? If it sounds cool, it's cool, right? So you can do it on the one, you can do it on the two. You're not supposed to do it on the three, but you can. You can definitely do it on the four. I even like that little lift that you get when you put it on three going to four. I think that sounds really good. You can put it on the five to replace the major chord. You can put it on the six to replace that minor chord. You can't really put it on the seven though. You know that seven has that root, flat, fifth, and flat third in there. One, five, two. That's completely different. You can't really substitute that sus two for that voicing right there. So you can't really put it on the seven. But again, we don't really use the seven that much anyway. So who cares, right? The riff that I played here at the intro of this video used those three most important chord types, the major, the minor, and the sus2. And I based it here in the key of D. So again, we're in the key of D. That's the one. Step up to the two. Step up to the three. Half step to four. Step to five. Step to six. Step to seven. Half step, we're back at one. I played the one chord, which is D. The six chord, which is B. The three chord, F sharp. The four chord, G. And then there at the very end, I moved it up to the five chord A to give us some good resolution. So one, six, three, four. Then it went one, six, three, four, five. Okay. I replaced some of those chords with majors, minors, and susses. I left the one chord here as just your, you know, big old fat D power chord. That's not major or minor because come on. Sounds awesome. That's why you're playing drop D tuning, so you can play that chord. The sixth chord I replaced with a sus2. Then we went to the three, which is minor. The four, which is major. Back to the one as a power chord. The six is a sus2. Three is minor. Four is major. Five is major. Back to the one. I find that whenever you play it really straight and put the major chord shapes on the one, four, and five, and put the minor chord shapes on the two, three, six, and really play by the rules, it can sound kind of cookie cutter, like very color inside the lines, you know? So replacing some of those kind of randomly with that sus2 voice thing just adds a little bit of interest to your riffs and stuff and keeps them from sounding too predictable. I wanna show you guys one more shape that you should know before we wrap this video up. And you can use this as kind of an alternative to that seven chord. You remember how we said the seven chord is like the diminished and it's really nasty and really hard to play, so why would we ever do it, right? Most of the time, whenever we're on that seven chord, instead of playing a diminished, we use a little substitution and we play this. Again, let's say I'm in the key of G, right? The one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, six chord, Seven, this is where diminished would usually go, right? 
but play this instead. I'll move that down an octave. Or you could play this even. That sounds really smooth, right? Much nicer than... Let's do the difference again. It's like very classical sounding, right? Now what we're doing right there when we play this shape, or this shape, is playing an inversion. You remember earlier I said that you can go 135 or 531 or 153, you can put those orders of the notes in any uh, order that you want to. Well, an inversion is where you put one of the other notes that's not the root note, not the one, as the bass. So you could play 351 or 531. Either way, it's that cluster of notes, only one isn't the bass note anymore. It's not the lowest sounding note in the chord. Now, whenever we play this right here, 454, four, if you're on the bottom strings here, what we're actually playing here is three root three. So this isn't the root note anymore. This is actually the root note. This is its third. This is its third down an octave. So instead of playing F sharp diminished, you can play this D chord actually instead with its F sharp in the bass. It's a little hard to follow, but just trust me, you can use this shape right here instead of playing diminished. And it's just gonna sound smoother overall. Now the second shape that I played right there, this one, that's an even nicer sound because if this is root, that's the fifth, right? Power chord shapes are always easy to find roots and fifths. And this is that low third. So this is kind of like root third fifth. You can hear how it's out of order, but it sounds really nice. So instead of playing F sharp diminished, consider playing this D over F sharp instead. For some context, let's play through all seven chords in the key of E major using that inversion of the five chord on the seven. I hope that's less confusing than what that sounded like. The one chord is E major. The two chord is F sharp minor. Step up to the three chord, G sharp minor. Half step to the four chord, A major. Whole step to the five chord, B major. Hold step to the 6th chord, C sharp minor. Hold step to the 7th chord, let's do that inversion. Doesn't that sound nice? So that is a B major chord with a D sharp in the bass, okay? Back to the 1 chord, E major. Again, I know all that stuff about the inversions and where the root note is and all that jazz. That might seem confusing, uh, but this is really common stuff. So trust me when I say that anytime you're on the seven, try using that inversion instead. And it's probably just gonna sound a lot smoother and nicer than your big old ugly diminished chord. There you go guys, some simple shapes that you can use to mix up your drop D playing and get away from playing those one finger power chords all the time. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there's anything bad about one finger power chords. Sometimes that's exactly what you need for like a big ass chorus. You don't want to mess with like clouding it up with making it major and minor and stuff. Sometimes power chords are just what you need and simple is best. So don't be afraid to use those all the time. But maybe if it's the verse of a song or like a little clean, you know, bridge section of the song that features some like picking or something like that, don't be afraid to mix it up with these majors, minors, susses, and all that jazz to get some more variety out of it. Just remember to learn that major scale and minor scale inside and out, right? Remember that in the major scale, the major chord types go on one, four, and five. The minor chords go on the two, the three, and the six. And that diminished chord goes on the seven and also learn that order for the minor keys and stuff like that and you're going to be coming up with some great ideas in no time thank you guys so much for watching liking this video and subscribing and don't forget you can get even more out of this by checking out that patreon exclusive episode which is available over on my patreon page patreon.com slash ben eller guitars even just a buck a month gets you access to that plus tons of backing tracks bonus lessons tabs charts a community of cool handsome people like yourself all kinds of good stuff 
Buck a month gets you there. And I know you guys are gonna get creative with this stuff and start coming up with your own riffs and progressions and everything, so upload a video of yourself playing any of your awesome creations on Instagram and be sure to tag me. I'm at Ben Eller Guitars, so I can check out what you're doing with all this vital information. Well guys, it's been fun as always, but now it's time to go play some guitar after I let Turkey outside. Catch you guys next time. Less clicking, more picking.